My name is Jonathan Brown. I'm a final year engineering student at Stellenbosch University. This video was filmed in order to demonstrate the functional abilities of my final year project, which is an intelligent GISA unit. This unit was designed in order to aid users in implementing demand side management by offering a greater degree of control and better feedback from the GISA unit that is installed in their house. The user interface for the control module is provided by means of a locally hosted website. This website can be accessed from a smartphone, iPad, laptop or tablet by means of a wireless access point which is created by the device itself. The default name of this uh, access point is EcoGeezer and the default password is Prisma Deluxe which is the name of the geezer that was used as a test unit. The website can be viewed on any web browser. Under the URL 192.168.0.10 colon 1964 forward slash status.html. The website consists of three pages status, graphs, and control panel. The status page gives the current status of the geezer, a second by second update of the inlet, outlet and internal temperature, the current control scheme, uh, the current status of the element and of the water flow cutoff valve. It also gives the current usage of power and the flow rate for, of, for the water and the daily totals for energy usage and water usage. The graphs page provides an update of the uh, current temperature of the geyser. These values update every three seconds currently. It also gives your energy totals every minute and your water totals every your water usage totals every minute. From the control panel, the various aspects of the geyser can be controlled. There are three available control schemes which the user can select. The second and third of which allow the user to select the temperature, and the third of which allows the user to select the desired heating times. From this page, the user can also override the water flow and element power controls. You can see on the video of the geyser unit itself how the water flow can be switched on and turned off from the website and how the light indicating the element power status also responds to the element power command. If we now go to the graphs page, we can see the results of opening the water tap. So since I opened the water tap, 7.5 litres has flowed through the geyser. If we go to the control panel and turn the element power on, and then go to the status panel, we will see that the element is on automatic, the control scheme is on manual, the water flow is on, the energy used has been updated, as has the water usage. The current power usage has also updated to reflect the fact that the element is on. And if we go to the graphs page, We can see that the internal temperature of the geyser has begun to climb uh, ever so slightly, but has begun to climb since we switched it on.
Several minutes have elapsed and, and now we can see that the internal temperature has risen a few degrees more. This temperature rise is also shown on the status panel there as 38 degrees up from what would have been about 29 at the beginning. The control unit also has a sensor that will detect whether or not a geyser has failed and in the event of a geyser failure will cut off power to the element and also cut off the water flow. Now I'm going to activate the sensor manually and um, we will see what happens. As you can see, uh, an alert was given to the user via the web page and the water flow and element were both cut off as expected. This, uh, will pre this provides the opportunity to prevent a great deal of damage happening in the event of a geyser failure, uh, which can uh, flood a house or um, seriously damage the roof in which it is situated.